eternity and long time no see it's it's been a minute y'all um <laughs> i think the last episode was back in september of last year and so much has been going on i'm sure y'all have seen outside um i took a much needed break to honestly just do nothing i did absolutely nothing these past few months um and it's been nice it's been nice it's been relaxing um i ain't gonna lie i also had like a creative block if i'm being honest mixed with some procrastination it happens okay it happens so i was like you know what let me put the microphone away for a little bit get myself together and honestly (laughs) even though i haven't had the microphone i still have been making playlists so that's how i knew that i need to kind of shake that shit off um but hey everyone does it so i've been creating playlists still still been thinking about the podcast and now i'm back and so i was kind of doing nothing and something at the same time this whole time so here we are i'm back and we're just gonna get right into it so today we're gonna be talking about the new mco trio the marvels i was really excited to see the marvels i was there opening day just like always for these movies um i think i've watched i don't i don't think i know i've watched wandavision at least (laughs) 20 times probably um that's not an exaggeration y'all i've literally watched that show so many times i've watched miss marvel probably about five times also no exaggeration because i just really love that show um so i was ready to see how all three of them were going to work on screen together um you know what i noticed when this movie first came on in like the first i don't know maybe 10 minutes was how good and crisp it looked um like in the beginning they showed carol and goose goose the cat um goose leaving her ship to go to space and like she just kind of like steps off of her ship of course she don't have no door <laughs> but um when she started floating in space i was like wow this is like really good considering all the cgi complaints and stuff that marvel has had it looked so good um but anywho carol's back carol's back and it's it's been a minute since her solo movie like years <laughs> so there's a lot to kind of catch up with her um because first of all where the fuck have you been since endgame and honestly even before endgame like carol carol's first movie was kind of technically a throwback so what if she's been doing this whole time she didn't come to help with thanos during infinity war from what we can tell or from what we know she didn't bother to check on monica when the blip happened so carol's been like a single cat lady for the past few years and She's been real introverted. We don't know what's going on. I do know. If I go to C2E2 this year, oh my God, that's next weekend. (laughs) Yeah, I wrote this script so long ago that C2E2 was months away. So (laughs) so the fact that I'm, anywho, well, damn, let me get my, I need to check my, check in my savings and see what's going on there. But anywho, if I go to C2E2 next week, um, hopefully i see somebody dressed in the you know cozy carol class way if you haven't seen the movie <laughs> carol she has her like her captain marvel suit on but she got like a, a white tank on also so she has the sleeves of her suit like she's not wearing the whole suit she's kind of got it halfway on and the sleeves are wrapped around her waist and i was like wow that's really comfy she got her rainbow crocs goose the cats some socks she's really chilling on the ship like extreme introvert but i hope i hope somebody does that um, one of the cons. Anywho, so aside from Carol, we got Carol out the way. We also have Monica Rambeau. She is back and on the big screen finally. Um, before I say anything else, and I I hope these are the right people because when I looked them up, these are the names that popped up. But shout out to I believe it's Nikki Wright and Cookie Jordan who did um, Monica's hair on WandaVision and I think Angela Apia, Apia, I hope I'm saying that right did her hair on the marbles but anyway whatever they did they need all the style awards especially the hairstyle awards because that wig that Tiana Paris had on was so fucking flawless like I've never seen a perfect 4C twist out wig on screen on the movie on the TV hell in real life honestly like there's always something wrong with the wigs and these were perfect like at one point in the movie in the marvelous monica had to like 
get submerged in water <laughs> and when she popped up it was a different wig to show that like her twist out was wet and i was like oh oh this attention to detail right here yes thank you thank you thank you like it's so frustrating seeing actresses have actresses have to deal like do their best basically in these horrible horrible wigs that they be having on these sets so Monica's hair was 10 eyes in and I just really need to point that out because uh, it just it just felt so good it felt so good but anyhow anyhow yes Monica's back last we saw her was about three years ago in Westview trying to help wander through her grief as she you know brainwashed and held a whole town hostage but that'll be for all another episode but Wanda created the hex if you know you know and Monica being the you know oh I got this I'm smart stop and let me do it she basically <laughs> runs straight through this hex that Wanda created and so by doing that she gained her superpowers which is I don't, is it is her powers to like separate light I'm not quite sure I understand what they are but they're cool <laughs> so basically like physical object objects can pass through her and she can pass through physical objects basically um it's kind of like what vision be doing but she not vision <laughs> if that makes sense um and lastly my girl my girl kamala khan kamala khan yes I, her and kamala be fucking me up but i remember from the show it's kamala khan come uh <laughs> i was doing it right before i said the other person's name anywho the cons aka miss marvel i love the cons so much that family the actors playing them are so good if you watch miss marvel <laughs> her initial scenes in the movie is like an extended version of the last scene from the disney show so like when the marvels comes on it's the last episode of the marvels um so they did try to bring it together so i like that they used her like daydreaming and drawings to set her up for the movie audience because I am also a daydreamer, so that's probably why I like Kamala so much, because me and her are the same. <laughs> um, she is obsessed with Carol Danvers and with uh, Captain Marvel, hence her name, and she also has powers. Um, in her show, we initially think she gets her powers from a bangle that her grandmother sent her from Pakistan, um, by the way, free Palestine, and then in the very last minutes of the series, Kamala's friend Bruno, who's her like guy in the chair, tells her after testing her blood that she is a wait for it. She's a mutant gene since she was born. And so it's the first time that the word mutant gets dropped in the MCU. So Kamala is our first official, officially named mutant in the MCU, I'm pretty sure. Um, her power is that she can form matter from light like these very shiny very purple black things also that color purple keeps you know popping up in the color in, in the mcu just want to point that out um so anyway after they dropped the mutant bomb on her show um there was like an end credit scene where kamala's mom's calling for her kamala's bangle starts to sparkle and then boom she's gone and carol is in her bedroom and now it all makes sense because that is literally the exact same thing that happened in this movie so back to the Marvels movie, we also got Nick Fury. Fury is also back on the big screen, which we also haven't seen the real, <laughs> to be clear, the real Nick Fury um, in quite some time. He's gone through the events of Secret Invasions, and he's been kind of chilling in space with his team called Saber. It's like an acronym, and I forgot what it stands for. Monica said it in the movie, so go watch if you want to know what it means, but now him and monica are working together because she is i'm pretty sure she's like i don't know the manager the manager manager <laughs> shout to uh corporate era oh my god <laughs> i'm not even gonna go down that road but that shit is so funny anyway um so getting into the plot of the movie monica is outside fury's ship fixing something with her two co-workers um and while monica is out there working fury gets in touch with carol about some strange activity that's happening on her side of space so he's like you know can you go check that shit out for me turns out the activity comes from the villain of the movie darben who was on another planet dug up that second bangle that matches kamala's and so darben's like hold on 
this is there's supposed to be two of them where's the other one and now we have the plot of our movie <laughs> so fury fury he's getting old so he's becoming like a messy old man uh, so he gets carol on the phone and he also calls monica on three-way no way knowing that they don't talk to each other <laughs> but he's trying to get them to work together to figure out you know like what is going on because clearly something's happening in the space and carol is all like oh shit is that is that monica on the line and monica monica is acting how i would like <laughs> she nearly hung up on both of them first of all don't put nobody on the phone that i don't know on the phone this this is kind of like in the same realm of don't facetime me unless you're gonna tell me you're gonna facetime me like don't just have somebody on three-way without telling me but whatever um so both monica and carol while in separate locations they you know are trying to investigate this whole energy that's going on them and they both have some energy near them and of course even though they're not mad at each other they're pretty much the same they both have the urge to touch it why why would you touch it so as they're getting closer to the energy here we go we get our montage we got monica coming into frame we got kamala coming into the frame and we got carol coming to the frame all at the same time in their respective locations and as soon as they all touch the um no as soon as monica and carol touch the energy that's when kamala's bango goes crazy and then they all switch places this opening fight scene is probably my top five favorite Marvel fight scenes, period. I will argue with anybody. I don't care. Like, everybody snapped. <laughs> so, when they all sync together, the three of them were swapping places randomly, and then Monica ends up on the planet where Carol was. Carol ends up in Kamala's bedroom, and Kamala ends up in Monica's spacesuit floating in front of Fury's ship, which is what we saw basically from the commercials. Um, this this was like some top tier fighting choreography like all three of them were fucking giving it their all i really really like that monica's fighting style show that she has some type of like formal military training also because some of them combo moves i was like goddamn <laughs> like i'm glad we finally get to see what the fuck you can do because we didn't really see, get to see her fight in wandavision because she was fighting wanda and so it's kind of like a lot of air shit but now we getting like some real fighting um you know you want to know who stood out in the fight though <laughs> my girl mama maniba khan yes kamala's mama there was the shot of her like the creed and came into the house or whoever those people were they fucking up the living room and one of them is about to like hit her husband and the shot of her protecting her husband when them goons came through her living room i ain't gonna lie had me on my feels a little bit <laughs> i was like oh am i getting uh -uh, I'm not getting emotional during the fight scene, but I love that one specific shot so much. Um, I was not expecting the Khan family to have as much screen time as they did. And when I realized that they were getting so much screen time, I was so happy because I just, I just love them. <laughs> um, and Nia Costa, along with the other two women writers, I think it was Megan McDonald and I cannot see, Alyssa Karasik, um, they did really well. It just writing a movie about the perspective of three very different but very similar female superheroes like no love interests no storylines like that no cheesy girl power quote or handshake it was just three superheroes and a villain speaking of that villain um Darben, I, I mean the way the movie is set up i don't think we will but i hope this isn't the last we see of her because is it i think it's is it zawe zawe ashton is the actress playing her and she is really really convincing plus i just i really like her character design i don't know maybe we can like get her on a disney plus show somehow um because that was too good of an on-screen character to only use once um that's the same thing for that guardians of the galaxy 3 villain bring him back too like, I'm sure we can figure out a way to get the TVA to like loop some shit around and we can get Darben. And I cannot remember his name. I need to watch that movie again. But I really, really like Darben, this villain. I don't know if it's the grills or what, but I'm fucking with it. Um, you, you, know, <laughs> you know who else had a way bigger storyline in the movie besides the cop that I was not expecting? Goose the Cat. <laughs> Nothing. 
<laughs> Nothing prepared me for the amount of cute kittens that were going to be shown on screen. I leaned forward in my seat. I would like to volunteer at the Flirting Kitty Shelter. I don't, I'm going to have to take a lot of allergy pills. I'm literally trying to fight through allergies right now while recording this. But I I would like to volunteer at the Flirting Kitty Shelter because where are all those cats going to go? They're just going to be all over New York now. Or, well, New Jersey now. <laughs> um, but it would be worth it. I don't, I don't want to even do the entire movie. Um, because just I just I'm not gonna do that and I'm sure there's some haters or some people out there who still probably haven't seen it go see it I, I implore you to give it a try it's a really really good movie don't be scared of female leads they don't bite <laughs> if I had to rate this movie I'd probably read it at 8.5 maybe 8.5 out of 10 um I absolutely love that it's not male centered for one I love that all their personalities are so different so there's like a little something for everybody I love Kamala she's just so funny I, I am very childlike still and I feel a lot like Kamala at times um I love that Monica is finally getting some movie screen time because she she's she's entered my top five favorite MCU characters so far um the only things that I am marking down for this movie is the singing planet i'm just not a musical girl but but it does not last long and kamala i mean kamala, kamala and monica's uh one-liners doing that whole music thing was actually pretty funny it made it tolerable so it wasn't too, too bad the other thing i'm knocking for is i didn't feel maybe it's just me maybe i just overlooked it but i didn't feel the sense of urgency of darbin's story like i know why i know what she wanted she wanted the bank on but the whole thing about her planet i kind of just wish we could have got more about that um because it was like there was something missing and so it was like well i don't get why she's fucking with them like this but again if we can get her back in some other aspect then maybe that will make the storyline you know a little bit more in depth um i think was that it i think that's really the only thing I would knock it down for overall I just I really liked it and at first I'm like should I feel bad for rating it so high because people might might not get what's going on like they've never seen Kamala they've never seen Monica on the screen so this is kind of like their first introduction honestly no I do not feel bad I don't feel bad <laughs> I truly enjoy WandaVision I truly enjoy Miss Marvel I watched both series multiple times and I look at it like this back before all these things were on like a TV or a movie screen you had the comic books the comic books have a number of their issues so if you were to read issue 14 of any storyline and then jump to issue 16 and have a problem because you decided not to read issue 15 <laughs> then whose fault is that that you don't understand what's going on so that's kind of how I feel about the MC movies like I get it it's a lot of content you got the movies, you got the shows, you, you got the actual comic books. There's a lot of material. But if you're only just keeping up with the MCU stuff, why not just watch the other fucking shows so you can understand what's going on instead of complaining about it? So I don't feel bad for liking this movie because I understood all of the backstory that went with it. It's just it's just a digital version of keeping up with the comic book issues at this point. That's That's how I look at it. So for those who want to give the movie a try and you haven't watched WandaVision and you haven't watched the Marvels I mean no Miss Marvel on Disney Plus I say give it a chance I learned a lot especially from Miss Marvel I was all on Google looking up the great partition I did not know what that shit was and WandaVision is just a really good fucking story um I would I would encourage people to read all the digital issues <laughs> TV and movie issues of the storyline so that they know what's going on because it was really good. I I do feel like this movie added a lot of value to the character storylines. I ain't gonna, I don't I I would like to see Brie Larson as Captain Marvel give have like a little bit more. I need her to have like a storyline that's gonna like really pull something out of her. I don't know 
what it is that I'm also missing from Captain Marvel, but there's just also a little, little something missing there. So we'll see. She's got. She, I'm pretty sure she's got to get a third storyline to wrap it up. Listen, listen. I've, I think I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Carol Danvers <laughs> in credit scene. I don't know whose movie, what movie. Carol Danvers goes into a store. She accidentally drops something. We see her hand go down to pick it up. We see another hand with a glove also going to pick it up. That person with the glove hand picks it up, pan the screen up. You hear a country woman saying, here you go, darling, or whatever. Carol says, thank you. And then as the country woman, we don't even have to see the face. We don't even need like a specific actress. We just need some shot of like auburn hair with that gray streak in the front. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> Please. Give us the storyline where Rogue takes Carol's powers. I, I want it. <laughs> I want it so bad. I want it so, so bad. <sighs> All right. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I just had, I didn't really need to get that out. Um, so, <sighs> I am going to talk about now this end credit scene. So, if you have not seen the Marvels, you got about three seconds because I need to blow my nose real quick. And I'm going to say, spoil it. Alright, so, I ain't gonna lie, it had been a minute since I've been to the movie, so I was like, oh shit, I get to sit here for an end credit scene, like, <laughs> I don't know why I felt like, kind of like Christmas, like, oh shit, we haven't done this in a while, so, talk about adding value to a fucking character, now, I knew there'd be an end credit scene, I did not expect it to be anything big, but then again, I did, because I've noticed that Marvel likes to hide the good stuff, in the shows the toxic fans refuse to entertain like fox's pedro showed up in wandavision didn't nobody want to watch that um the word mutant finally being said in miss marvel didn't nobody want to watch that matt murder showing up in she hulk and echo people trying to hate on those hell all the cameos in she hulk like people really missed out so i knew i knew we would get something i was not <laughs> expecting to see the follow-up to what happened to Monica in the movie so soon um you gotta watch the movie to go see but basically some shit happens to Monica right at the end of the movie and we're kind of like left with well what's gonna happen to Monica now the end credit scene pretty much jumped right into that so Monica's laid up <laughs> in the hospital bed and I'm like oh shit oh shit like we we jumping right back in the story let me like I'm leaning forward in my seat putting my popcorn and stuff away like hold on let me go sit back for a second then Lashana Lynch shows up on the screen in that fresh makeup and I instantly knew something was very wrong and very right at the same time and that that was not Monica's mama so listen <laughs> I'm so busy staring at Lashana Lynch because she's so gorgeous on the screen I, did, I hear that deep ass voice and I'm like hold what hold on I went to Leonardo hold on I I I know that voice <laughs> before I could even get my thought of I know that voice out I just see a blue hand and I'm like <gasps> it's fucking Kelsey Grammer that's Kelsey Grammer's voice <laughs> Kelsey Grammer's back and so are the fucking X-Men because Beast show up on that fucking screen and I'm, <laughs> the guy behind me goes finally <laughs> listen I've never been more excited in my life like that was the first time in a long time that I left a Marvel show and was like I immediately need to go on YouTube and watch the videos I didn't and let me say I'm highly disappointed in the fact that I went online to look up some review videos and everything was just a male to like I don't think I found one women's reaction video I need to do a better job at curating my YouTube because I don't know why I have all these men reviewers and none of them had anything good to say about this movie even though I loved it so I'm still looking if y'all know anybody tag them please because I just I can't I can't have all my review videos be for men it's ridiculous but um this is the first time that I went back to see a Marvel movie in theaters in a very long time like I don't think I've seen probably the past three or four movies twice in theaters 
but I was definitely going back to see this. Um, and I couldn't wait for the behind the scene, behind the scene, behind the scene show. Is it uh, assembled? Marvel's assembled? I was like, oh my god, they need to hurry and put that shit out now. I need to see it now. I need to see all those kitties now. Um, so I did. It did finally come out. Seeing Nia DeGosta talk about how passionate she was about this movie. Um, had me like all cheesy because I just love her she did candy man if y'all don't know which she shot in Chicago and I just I just love it <laughs> so I was like oh I'm just so happy for this whole cast and crew because it looked like it was really fun um speaking of that show though that little behind the scenes Nia DaCosta said she originally pitched an entire Galactus movie before getting this Marvel job and um I would like to see it please I would like to know what she pitched because I remember there was rumblings about people wanting oh my god why am I having a brain fart Ryan Coogler to do a Dr. Loom Dr. Doom and I'm like ooh yeah can we get some of the black directors to not just direct the black movies like because these ideas sound great so I would love to know what she had for Galactus Galactus <laughs> my allergies are really fucking with me today um I would love to know what it was I want to see it even if it's just the idea I want to hear what it was because I'm excited to see what she can bring um I'm really hoping Marvel doesn't let the fact that one this is the first movie to come out after the strike ended so it had no promotion and two they there was really everything was word of mouth so I'm hoping that doesn't let them deflect from doing more with anybody that was related to this project and also, men who didn't even watch the movie were flooding social media to deter other people from watching the movie. So it's kind of like, it's not fair to everyone who was on this project. Like, this was kind of like the test dummy for coming out of the the strikes. And it did not do well in theaters, but I think it did well among the fans. And I'm pretty sure it was doing good on Disney+. Plus. So hopefully we can get more of the girls and... Uh, Definitely more Kamala and Monica on the bridge. Who I cannot wait to see what the fuck is going on with Monica. Oh my god. <sighs> Hold on to your britches, ladies. It's happening. But anywho, let me know what y'all thought. If you did see the movie, what was your favorite parts? Uh, I would love to know. Email me, the Malaji Lounge at gmail.com. And we're almost done. All right, all right. So, in keeping with the theme of the Marvels, this week's playlist, playlist, I swear I can talk, y'all. This week's playlist highlights uh, women that came together on the track and just fucking killed it. Like, there's, there's no other way to explain it. Um, but before I get into the playlist, I want to talk about two women who have sang together, they've acted together, and I, I feel like they hosted an award show together once could be lying but I feel like that actually happened but these two women deserve so much more recognition for their for like their actual verbal comedy for their physical comedy improvisation timing of delivery just individually and together and that is Tachina Arnold and Tisha Campbell when <laughs> when I was looking for a cover photo for this playlist I immediately thought of that episode of Martin when um when Biggie came and Pam and Gina were <laughs> on the stage cutting up as Patty LaBelle and Jennifer Holiday. Pam doing that fucking Grace Jones squat while singing and Gina doing that hard ass body roll while singing I am telling you just it, it cracks me up every single time I fucking watch it. Um, so yes they are this week's thumbnail on the playlist so when you see them go ahead and hit play but I just I really adore them and I tried so hard if you're if you are 90s kids you know they did a cover and a video a music video for um don't ask my neighbor it is not on streaming I tried so hard to find it so I did sneak a little little um shop of horror song in there that they did together from the soundtrack which I don't know why I didn't even realize that movie had a soundtrack <laughs> but I'm glad it did so couldn't find the one from the 90s but I did find something from there so if you see them on a thumbnail and you're like what they doing here they deserve to be that's why but this playlist was so fun to make like this is the playlist that I've always I've been playing with 
for the past few months now um and let me say it is like it's 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 long <laughs> at first i was like oh i'm just gonna like keep it no this is one of those playlists that is good to either play in order or shuffle because it's it's just that long that i wouldn't expect anybody to listen to it all the way through but we got songs from singers we got songs from rappers something i noticed when i was looking for songs specifically on the r&b side there was a period from like the late 90s to damn near all the 2000s where i could not find women artists collabing um and to be honest i kept seeing the same two or three men collabing with almost every single female artist that i come through and i was like what is going on even some of the women had no other features on their entire album but they would have <laughs> this one guy and i'm like what the fuck is this shit like this is not what i was looking for so i'm gonna say the last three or four years maybe like since covid on we have been getting blessed with collabs like from Shanae featuring Summer, from Summer featuring Ari, from Ari featuring Chloe, from Chloe and Hallie featuring Doja Cat, Lotto and City Girls, from the City Girls featuring Cardi, Cardi featured on Glorilla song, Glorilla featuring Ma- like, this is all very new within the five years of having this much women collab and I love, like I, I should have made a chart of <laughs> all, all the people who have started to collab with each other, I would have looked like that meme of that dude uh, with the conspiracy theorist but there's just so many connections now and i love it so this is definitely gonna be my spring and summer playlist for sure that's i ain't gonna lie (laughs) that's why i want to put this playlist out so i can upload the playlist so i can listen to it because it's not on my apple music it's on the podcast apple music so it's gonna be my spring and summer playlist for sure i would love for y'all to take a listen let me know what y'all think of my choices let me know what songs I could have added to represent more women coming together. Now, I couldn't put fucking everybody on here, but I tried to make sure that I got pretty much most of the ladies that we know past and present. Like, thank God for multiple collab features because <laughs> I think I did pretty good. Like, I think I got a lot of women from the industry on this playlist and so if i missed anybody let me know if i should have added a song here let me know again the melange lounge at gmail.com and that's all i got for y'all I'm, i told y'all whenever the fuck the last play uh, episode was we gonna start doing a short and sweet get to the point so thank y'all so much for stopping by coming back pressing play i really enjoyed y'all and i will be back <laughs> i appreciate your patience and yeah you can listen to this week's episode on all the um platforms where podcasts are you can listen to the playlist on apple music and spotify and if you have any artists or song suggestions that remind you of your favorite character or storyline it does not have to be marvel it does not even have to be comic book i'm about to start you know kind of dabbling into some movies I need to i need to really dust off like my movie brain i'm trying to get my attention span to be longer because I've been on social media since since <laughs> internet was coming in the mail on the CD. So I, I'm I'm about to start diving back into movies and maybe making some playlists from some movies that I love. So I would love to hear what y'all would do, what y'all would think, your opinions. Who knows? Maybe I'll read them on the show or add your song to a playlist. We'll we'll see. Play it by ear. See how it goes. You can follow us on socials right now i'm gonna just say follow us on youtube and tiktok at least tiktok for now at the melage lounge i don't i don't know (laughs) what that's gonna look like i think the tiktok thing happens september so we'll see but um if you want to follow me i mean i ain't gonna lie i don't really be posting nothing but i do have accounts on tiktok and instagram trinity one of one I said I was going to start posting like my old concert videos on TikTok and I mean if they're going to take it away I might as well fucking do it now so who knows if you start seeing random old concert footage popping up that's me but yeah I enjoyed y'all I can't wait to come back I li- procrastination I s- listen when I tell y'all I got the new t- the next two episodes already they already done like I just need to finalize these playlists and it's a wrap so I will see y'all soon and Have a good day, y'all. That's it.